All right. So I, I will say for the first set of data that you had, cranking through it, your focal lengths I got were, I guess from the experiment when you were looking at the drink machine down there was 21 point, a little bit more than 21 centimeters. From the experiments on the track, you, your lowest one was around 20 and a half, and the largest was about 20.8. So you're right there in the ballpark. So apparently that the fabric, the packet was did not go with that lens. Mm -hmm. uh, did I? I wound up uh, doing the. Uh, how do how do mine measure up with what you got? All right, the, the roughly the same ballpark. Uh, the one thing that I do want to comment on is that if the image is upside down or inverted, it is considered a negative height. Okay, okay, so F1 is so F1 is, is negative. The well, is negative. M1 is negative Q over P. Yeah, so Q over P. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. First page, M1 is negative Q over P. M2 is HI over HO. And the okay. negative sign slips in that anything upside down is a negative. Okay. <clears throat> and that, uh, the difference from like so 20.8 to 21.3 or whatever, that could just be like you looking at it. And when they say it's focus. Wait, say it again. Like the differences that you talked about, where we had 21.3 for the drink machine down there. Right. And then on the track, it was like point, point something, point point eight. That could just be like who's looking at it and when they say that it's in focus. Yeah. Yeah. And also, the, the 21.3 that you have for the F sub A makes the assumption that that's an infinite distance away. Hmm. And you get slightly better results if you go with a finite distance. I, I did a counting of tiles, so I got a crude approximation of a little over 2,000 centimeters. And that knocked it down to 20.1. So 21.1 21 .1 for the focal length. Slightly better results. If a more precise measurement, probably not gonna change it too drastically from that. Okay, this is not good. Yep. If you want to take a look, I would just, uh, if you want to take a look at how I got uh, the, for, got the answer for number three for percent error. Well, you're assuming that the, the package is correct. I, I think that you can legitimately assume that it was not in the right, not in the right package. So oh. therefore, you don't know the manufacturer's value. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So when you've got the multiple lens system, you basically are solving, you're using our, our equation twice. So I'm going to do the two examples. The first example is the classic, if you go through and try to find on the internet the dual lens systems, almost every single example, if not every single example that I found, is similar to that. Unfortunately, what you did right there and the more complex ones look like this. And so let's talk about the difference between the two. So I have an object 70 centimeters away from a converging lens. Now, how do we, based on what I've written right here, how do you know this is a converging lens? Absolutely. And then this one is diverging because Negative. That's the key right there. So when you work through the focal length of your diverging lens, it better be a negative number. All right, so we work through it, ignoring the diverging lens to start with, which is basically what we did right there. So I have one over P plus one over Q is one over F, the same formula that we've used so often. So 1 over 70 plus 1 over Q is equal to 1 over 30. And so work it out. Um, Q ends up being yeah, 52.5 centimeters. 
So this tells us that the image is at 52.5 centimeters on the back side of the lens. Because you expect the light to go through, so a positive Q value means the light actually went through where the image is. And so we have an image somewhere in the middle here. Oops. It's going to be inverted. My magnification is negative Q over P, so negative 52.5 over 70, which is somewhere around. 0.75. So if my object is that tall, my image should be three quarters of that length and down, so roughly like that. Where this distance here is 52.5 centimeters. Now when we bring the second lens into it, we have an object here, and so this is now, this is the, what am I going to call it, HI1, this is my first image, and that's going to be equal to the object for the second lens. And so now I'm going through the same thing here, this distance right here, well it's the difference between those two, which is 47.5. And so I'm picturing this image right here being sent through that lens. And so I have 1 over 47.5 plus 1 over Q is equal to 1 over negative 40. And we end up with a Q of 0.5. Yes. All right. Which means the image is on not on the other side of the lens, but on the same side as the lens, 21.7 centimeters away. The magnification, well, magnification two, this is magnification one. Magnification two, the negative, negative 21.7 divided by 47.5. Negative 0 0.46. 46. It'll be positive. Q is a negative number, plus we also have that negative number as part of the formula for magnification. Which means that it starts out upside down or inverted. It's going to stay inverted. So my final image will be, well, a little bit less than half that size. And that distance right there is. 21.7 centimeters. So in theory, if we were trying to reproduce that here, we'd have a screen right here and we'd get a crystal clear image. Unfortunately, if we put a screen right here, it would rock, pretty much block the light from going through the second lens. Which is why on the converging, diverging, or concave, convex mirror, lab, that was the main, main problem that we have is the lens getting in the way, which is why we didn't do the second part of that lab. All right, questions to hear. <clears throat> Relatively straightforward once you recognize that the image of the first lens is the object of the second lens. So the description for the second lens can be right, not converted. It's already inverted, and it's still inverted. The final image will be it's still considered inverted. From the object, from the real object. From the Correct. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I'm about to erase this. The image from the person. Not the actual object. Right. So it's going to be not inverted. Right. All right, now the more difficult one, the one that 
websites hate to tell you about, apparently. So we go through the same thing. We have a converging and a diverging lens. Again, converging, this is positive. Diverging is negative. So 1 over 60 plus 1 over Q equals 1 over 50. So again, we're just pretending that the diverging lens does not exist for the first part of this. Yes, negative 300 centimeters. centimeters yeah, thanks. Which says that the image of the first one is on the back side here. So we have an image. It will be uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, Sorry, it'll be. Uh, I did one. I did one sixtieth minus one fiftieth. Oh. Or, or, so oh, right. it'll be positive then. Yeah. And then I uh, inverse it. So one over Q would be one over fifty minus one over sixty, which is. Oh uh, yeah, flip flop those numbers. That's uh, what happens. Ten over three thousand. All right. So three hundred centimeters. Yes, 300 plus. All right. Which says that my image will be inverted because my magnification, we'll call it magnification one, uh, different than the magnification, I label magnification one, magnification two using different formulas than, rewind. This is because I'm using the first lens here. In the lab, I have M1, M2. Those are relating directly to how I find M1 and M2 on the first page. So, uh, so this is negative Q over P, which is negative 300 over 60 or negative 5. So my image is inverted and five times the original size, obviously not drawing the scale here. So this distance here is 300 centimeters. This is now my object for the second lens. Object for first lens. Uh, sorry. Object for second lens or image for first lens. And we did the exact same thing uh, for the first example. This is the tricky part. This is the front, this is the front side right here. We set that out. We actually defined that when we made P right here a positive number. This is the back side. This is behind. So when I figure out what is P for the second lens, so we're now doing the second part of this. Again, plug it into one over P plus one over Q plus one over F. P is the distance from here to here, and it is negative. That is the trick. So this is one over negative 200 plus one over Q is equal to one over negative 30. Uh, negative 33, uh, I mean uh, 35 plus 3 okay. centimeters. Don't forget units. All right. Now, where is this? Back to the right. 
Why to the right? Because our, we've been using left as positive, and that number is negative, so it needs to go back that way. But if I take a normal lens here, I have a lens here, I expect the light to go through it. Yes. Presumably then. So this would be positive P over here and positive Q over on that side. Since we have a negative Q in this particular case, um, let's see how to word this, because I know it's going to end up over here in the middle. So we would end up with uh, oh yeah. So positive Q is on the right side. It's on, uh, but our negative value here puts it over on the left side because this is the positive P on this side, negative P on this side, positive Q on this side, negative Q on that side. So it'll end up being over here. This is a 35.3 centimeters. That's why this is all electric here, and probably why most websites, when you look for the dual lens system, decide to ignore it. The magnification two would be negative, negative 35.3 over negative 200. which ends up being a negative, whatever that is, uh, 0.1765. So the total magnification of what I would expect is m1 times m2, or negative 5 times negative 0.1765. Which is something a little bit less than one. Oh, 0.8825. So my final image it's smaller. is smaller by about 12% and erect. Pointing upwards. Questions about this before I take a look at it from a different point of view? Same problem. The justification for why the numbers work out this way. That's 60 centimeters, 50 is about like that, which is the focal length. And so it puts the other lens about here. So we have a focal length that is roughly there. That's the focal length of the first one, focal length of the second one, focal length of one there, two there. Sort of a, a crude sketch there. I know that light that comes in to it converging lens will then go in through the focal point. Thus the absolutely hilarious cattle ranch joke. Light that goes through the center here I think I am going to have to draw this better than this. Alright, so let's get Move to the meter stick. Um, and then we'll set the scale of one here. So each 
of those is five, six, eight, something like um, So here's my object. There's my thin lens, my second thin lens. All right, here's my focal length for number one. It's a light that comes in straight, will then go through the focal, this focal point over here. Light that goes through the center. And crudely drawn, I've done it on paper where it comes out much closer to the paper drawing. All right, so light is coming in right here. It then converges, light that comes in this way bends. This goes through the center, doesn't actually bend. If it goes through the focal point right here, it would then hit the lens and then shoot off straight going this way. And all those would be in one spot. And of course, it's a drawing done by me without, our, without the precision that I need. So we have an image here. It is indeed bigger than what we started with. This has its own focal length, so let's sort of set that up. It's basically recreating what we did mathematically right there, and then I'm gonna talk about uh, closer to the, sorry, apparently multitasking, not my thing. And apparently math is not my thing right now. See, that was 30, so that should have been there. That's the one with all my F2, my F2. Right, so light that comes in straight goes away from that focal length right there. Uh, let's make sure I'm getting that the right one. So. Same mistake when I was doing that. So I have this light coming in, it hits the diverging lens and then diverges that way. Which means if I'm starting on that side, as I come in, it's going to sort of straighten out. So light that goes through this focal point right there, it's going to basically sort of straighten out. Again, light's actually coming in this way. Um, light that goes through the center, so it's going to go through the center and they meet right there and so that ends up being our image obviously drawn badly but the idea is there now let's think in terms of actual light light is coming in here it will converge and at that point it will diverge if i'm just thinking about not each lens separately but as a group here as it comes in here, it's going to diverge, and so that means it's going to bend away in some direction. Light that goes through the center here will keep going. When it hits that, it will diverge. If you trace these back, that's where you're getting your image. Because as light is diverging, as it goes through the second lens, as it goes away from each other, what our brains will process is that light sort of coming backwards, and we'll picture this, we'll, we'll picture the image where our brain perceives it to be based upon this sort of back tracing. Again, justification for why the ultimately the final image is in between. And so that's the stuff that you need to keep in mind when you're doing the analysis for the, the 
the second part with the di diverging lens. So let's just run through an example from the video. Questions on this before we, we do one concrete example here. had the position of the object, or in the video, the AI, was at 80 centimeters. The position of the lens was at 50 centimeters. And the position of the screen, 35 centimeters. That distance right there would be P, that distance right there would be Q. So we can find the focal length. Uh, so P for the converging lens is 30 centimeters, Q is 15 centimeters. So 1 over 30 plus 1 over 15 is 1 over the focal length. And what is that focal length? Wait, one? That's a plus sign. Oh, ten. What do you get? Ten. 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 All right. So using a lens, so apparently I was using a lens with a 10 centimeter focal length. here and so object here this is 30 centimeters and my image is roughly like that then we stick I need more room here. Not the scale. So this is basically, this was my screen. Then you put the diverging lens in between and refocus this and we end up with Oh, the wrong numbers there. All right, so this was at 80. No, sorry, that was at 80. This was at 50. And screen was at 35. And then we put our lens at. Forty-one point three. This is our diverging lens. So this is f is equal to ten, and this is f is equal to some negative number. We refocus this so that this is now at thirty-one point four. So this gets shifted. Make sure I'm reading the numbers right. Okay. So my object distance for the second lens, in other words, that distance right there, uh, that distance right there, because that's the object, that's the image of the first lens, it's the object of the second lens. So that is 6.3 centimeters negative. That's my P for the second lens. Q is over here. It's the distance from the lens to where the image is clear. 
Q is that difference, which is 9.9 .9 positive. And so we can now find the focal length of our divergent lens of 1 over negative 6.3 plus 1 over 9.9 .9 is equal to 1 over F. Because I know it's a divergent lens, so it better be a negative focal length. Curves equation, we did that. Thin lenses, magnification, we've done all that. Okay. So that is the end of chapter 36.